Questions remain this morning about what went wrong in the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore as the cleanup and the rebuilding process will likely take years. So what can we expect? And joining us now, Rachel Sangria is an associate professor at Johns Hopkins University's Whiting School of Engineering. Rachel, thanks so much for joining us. You know, a lot of folks really watched this yesterday for the first time, just awestruck and uh, not just in, in the tragedy that unfolded in front of them, uh, but also that something so massive when we're talking about the bridge itself could collapse seemingly so easily easily from an engineering standpoint what happened um uh, well what it seems uh, seems to have happened is um, a very large uh, uh, shipping vessel um it lost control collided with uh one of the piers of the bridge um and uh, as, as i think you're showing in that in that video um the pier is of course critical to supporting um at least the spans, the steel truss spans on either side um, of that pier. Um, but in addition, because of the the way that this bridge is constructed, is constructed, which um, basically uh, shares load uh, among those those three spans uh, you saw come down, um, the the third span was also left unsupported. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's shocking to see you know a, a, such a large structure um, made of, you know, strong material, steel and reinforced concrete to come down so uh, seemingly easily. But that was a large um, vessel um, that was a significant impact on a supporting structure. A lot of is going to go into what happens next and in, in rebuilding a new bridge, whether or not it's done the same way or not. This bridge was built in the early 70s. Now in, in 2024 and, and however long it takes to put a new bridge up, what, what do you think they will look at as far as coming up with something? Would it be a similar design uh, that would work out just as well for that area or would it be something that might look completely different? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's hard to speculate on that. That was certainly a, um, an appropriate design for the span length that they were you know, looking to achieve for the, the shipping channel. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't want to speculate there, but there was, I guess I would say there's nothing, um, you know, inherently wrong or deficient with that type of design. Um, it was, it was the impact of the, the vessel on the, um, on the pier. So, I, I would think that, you know, that could be on the table still, though I'm, I'm sure, you know, as a result of the, um, the investigation that's, um, you know, yet to be started, because of course we're still, this is uh, a tragedy on so many levels and they are still searching for victims, um, that, you know, as a result of the investigation, um, I'm sure they'll be looking at, uh, you know, what sort of uh, peer protective measures uh, should, you know, should be present. Sure, and, and I guess that's the, the big question right now because you're absolutely right. I mean, a, a ship of that uh, massive uh, size is, is just carrying so much weight uh, no matter what it hits. So I, I guess then the question, Rachel, is, is you know, as, as people look forward and engineers look to design new structures in the future, is is there the perfect bridge? Does it exist in, in possibility even if we were drawing it up from scratch? Um, you know, you can you can draw it um, up, and you can you know calculate uh, or or design a some sort of um, fender system that could protect that pier possibly. Um, but yeah, I would point to actually my my colleague Ben Schaefer uh, was quoted in the New York Times as saying, "Perhaps we could do it, but would it be practical?" Right, so we need to um, be looking at this from sort of a, a whole systems perspective. Uh, these are two sort of intersecting um, uh, transportation networks that are that are occurring under this bridge, right? And and one of them went wrong. Um, the you know the the vessel didn't stay in the shipping channel. Um, it. You know, and that intersected the the surface transportation structure, which sure. was the bridge. So, um, yeah, I think I think solving that sort of and thinking about that uh, from a from a whole sort of systems perspective will be really important. Yeah, it's an excellent point when it comes to practicality, for sure. Rachel, thanks for joining us this morning. Rachel Sangri is an assistant professor, associate professor, rather, at Johns Hopkins University School of Engineering. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Joining us from Baltimore this morning.